Let's take a look at adding mates to your assemblies in Onshape. I'll go ahead and switch over to this empty assembly tab and insert everything from the part studio. When I do, all of the parts are completely free to move and have all their degrees of freedom. To get started, I would first like to fix one of the parts so that it removes all of its degrees of freedom so all of the other parts can be mated with respect to it. To do this, I can simply right-click on any part in the graphics area or features list and select Fix. Any part that is fixed will have this icon next to it in the features list. I can, of course, unfix it by right-clicking on it again, but I'll leave it fixed for now. Onshape defines mates based on the intended behavior that you would like as a result, such as fastened, revolute, slider, planar, cylindrical, pin slot, and ball. For the first mate I would like to add, I would like to have this part slide along the base. So I'll choose the slider mate icon. When I do, you can see Onshape is prompting me to select what are known as mate connectors, which are at the heart of adding mates in Onshape. If I roll my pointer over any face, you can see small dots appear. These dots are locations on faces where you can establish mate connectors. If I roll over one of these dots, notice a small triad appears. What's powerful about mate connectors is that they're not just locations on faces or edges, but rather actual coordinate systems with their own X, Y, and Z axes. And the orientation of the axes is important to take note of, particularly for certain types of mates like this slider mate I'm adding here. A slider mate will allow two mate points to slide along the blue Z axis of the triad. If I wanted to use this connector location here, notice as I wake up the different faces and roll over the preview of the mate connector, the triad is oriented differently. Alternatively, if I wake up this edge and roll over the mate connector, you can see the triad is oriented with the Z axis normal to the edge. I'll go ahead and select it with the triad in this orientation. For the second mate connector, I can roll over faces of the other part, and the same principle applies here as well. I want to pay attention to the orientation of the triad, in this case, using with the edge or the face. When I select it, the part snaps into place. Notice there are icons to flip the primary and secondary axes in case you need to make any adjustments to get the result you're looking for. So, with this single mate added using mate connectors, I was able to remove several degrees of freedom in a single step to get the behavior I was looking for. Also, in the features list, you can see the slider mate listed here. If I double click on it, notice the drop down allows you to change this to any of the other mate types or even redefine any of the mate connectors in case you do need to make adjustments or use a different orientation for the mate connectors. I'll go ahead and close this. Let's continue on and add mates to the other parts. For this next one, I'd like to fasten the spindle inside the shaft. The fastened mate type removes all degrees of freedom between any two mate connectors, so they're essentially glued together. For the mate connectors, I'll select the point on the face inside the shaft and on the face of the spindle. Again, I can use the flip axes buttons. At this point, if I rotate one of the parts, you can see they both rotate together. Next, I'd like to make this with a sliding jaw. Looking at the toolbar, you can see there are options for Revolute and Cylindrical. Revolute removes an additional degree of freedom than Cylindrical, but rather than explaining, let's just take a look. I'll select Cylindrical for now. For the first mate point, if I roll over the cylindrical face of the jaw, you can see there are three default mate connector locations along its axis. Alternatively, I could roll over the back face and use the point here. As a side note, if you ever find yourself having trouble selecting a particular mate connector due to other faces being woken up by your pointer as you move it, one thing to note is that you can hold down the shift key on the keyboard to keep the mate connector showing on the screen as you move the pointer. I'll select this point at the rear of the cylinder and repeat the process for the shaft. 
When the parts snap into position, you may notice that previous mates that you've added are not solved during the step of adding the new mate. And in instances like this, you can click the Solve button. Again, if needed, you can click the Flip Axes buttons. And I'll click the green check to finish. At this point, when I move the spindle, you can see it's free to rotate about the mate connector. But of course, it's also free to move along the axis as well. This is due to the cylindrical mate type I defined it as. Instead, I'll double click the mate, change it to Revolute, and click the green check. Now, when I move the spindle, you can see how the Revolute mate allows the spindle to rotate without moving away from the mate point on the jaw. One last thing. In this example, I used the mate tools on the toolbar to select mate connectors as I was creating them, but keep in mind you can always use the mate connector tool to precisely define the location and orientation of mate points ahead of time. You can even add mate connectors in your part studios, and they'll be available when you bring parts into an assembly. Mates and mate connectors are powerful. And as you can see here, only three mates were added to get the behavior I was looking for here in this example. As you get started using mates in Onshape, I recommend playing around with the different mate types and the effects of using different mate connector orientations, and you'll quickly see how mates can make your assemblies come together efficiently as well. <laughs>